The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hello, Ethelbert. What are you reading? Hiya, Casey. I'm just brushing up on the baseball scores. Was that so? I didn't know you were a baseball fan. Oh, sure. I follow the Dodgers every year. Hmm. Who's your favorite team, Casey? Well, I usually root for the Yankees. Uh, how about you, Tony? Who, me? Why, naturally, I root for Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Laughing Killer. <laughs> Midnight, and the Blue Note Cafe is doing its usual brisk midnight business. From the service end of the bar, a waiter beckons to Ethelbert, the head bartender. What do you want, Walter? Uh, the guy at that table by the wall wants another drink, Ethelbert. How about it? He's licked to the eyes. Hmm. You better collect his bill and ease him into a cab. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. Huh? His face is familiar. You know who he is, Walter? No. He's a new one to me. Hmm, I can't place him, but he's a clean-cut-looking guy. Yeah. See, he gets a right cab, Walter, with a driver you know, huh? Okay, if I can get him out and into a cab. Hi, Ethelbert. Well, Casey. Hello. Evening, Miss Williams. You Hi. two just put the paper to bed? Yeah, nothing to do now but go home and get some shut-eye. Oh, and how I'll go for that. Oh, I'm tired. You and me both, Annie. Uh, Ethelbert, give me a pack of cigarettes, will you? Same old brand? Sure, same old brand. What do you think? Here. Pick up what you need. Why you got a bullet mixed up with that silver? A bullet? Uh, oh. Oh, Captain Logan gave that to Casey today. Yeah? This 32 caliber shell was in an automatic that killed a guy last month, pal. Casey helped Logan get the killer, so that cartridge is to remember him by. A little slug just like that bumped someone off, huh? A 32 is big enough when it gets inside you. Uh, don't go into details. I can imagine. I don't want to go home. I look. I want another drink. Please, mister. Oh, no, I, I don't want to go One home. One of your customers isn't listening to reason, Ethelbert. Uh, uh, Ethelbert, hey. Hmm? Isn't that drunk Artie Maddox? Artie Maddox? Yeah. Sure, I knew I'd seen him before. When did he get out of the big house, Casey? Last month on parole. I meant to look him up, but I haven't had time. You mean that nice-looking man is an ex-convict? Yeah, and he was sent up for murder, Miss Williams. Well, not quite. That was manslaughter. A lot of doubt that he was guilty even of that, too. Mm, that's so. What? His case was hot news before you come to this town, Miss Williams. Artie Maddox was an orchestra leader. Well, he had one of the best and... sweet bands in the country, Annie. Before he met some dame who calls herself Gypsy Hibbert. Gypsy Hibbert? Oh, the, uh, the big uh, blues singer. That's right. Yeah, you can shorten the gypsy part of her name to plain Jip. That'd describe her better, too. What happened? Well, she was singing in a roadhouse, and Artie heard her. He hired her and gave her a feature spot with his band. Then he went nuts about her and wanted to marry her. But she just kind of strung him along in order to meet more important guys. One of which was Phil Blaney. At that time, Annie, five years ago, Blaney was the big shot in the gambling racket here. You mean he had the spot that Lou Carboni has now? Uh-huh. Oh. Carboni, then, was merely Blaney's first assistant. Well, Blaney went for the gypsy gal in a big way. One night, the cops got a phone call from Gypsy who said there'd been an accident in her apartment. When they got there, they found Blaney with a bullet in his head, and Artie Maddox was in the apartment. He said Blaney had pulled a gun on him, that there'd been a struggle. The gun went off in Blaney's direction. Of course, Gypsy told the same story. A lot of folks, including the cops, were more than half convinced that it was she who'd really shot Blaney in cold blood. And that Artie Maddox told the story he did to protect her. Yeah. 
But she came out of the mess undamaged, and poor Artie went to jail. And he hadn't been in the big house six months when Gypsy Hibbard married Lou Carboni, who'd fallen here to Blaney's racket. Nice girl. Yeah. So nice that even a rat like Carboni couldn't stand for her long. They separated a little while afterwards, and Gypsy got a divorce and heavy alimony. Well, Artie Maddox is out on parole now, that's all. I don't want to go home. Except that he won't stay out if the parole board hears he's getting plastered. If those waiters are going to get him out of here, it looks as though they'll have to carry him out. Hey, maybe I could straighten him oh, out. Oh, now, Casey, don't start one of your Boy Scout acts. Uh, Walter will put him in a cab, Casey. Sure. Well, what happens after he's put out of the cab? I'm going over Leave there. Alone. I don't want to go home. I now, stay. look here, mister. I'll, I'll take care of him, Walter. What? You know this guy, Casey? Sure. Remember me, Artie? Ah, uh, sure. You're a cop, ain't you? No. I'm no cop. But you know, it wouldn't be good if a cop saw you right now. A guy on parole is supposed to behave himself. Well, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just celebrating something. Something awful funny that's happened. <laughs> you never guess the funny thing that's happened. Yeah, well, suppose night. I run you home, huh? You <laughs> tell me about it on the way. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell anybody. But you... <laughs> you can read about it in the papers tomorrow. Okay, but let me take you home anyway. Now you can read it in the papers. Hey, say, you work on a paper. I remember you now. You're Casey. That's right. Uh, Casey, good old Casey. I'll buy you a drink. Uh, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, no, wait a minute. Wait hey, wait a minute. We'll have in. one later. We'll have one later. You got a bottle at home, Artie? Uh, sure, I got a bottle well, at home. Well, that's fine. Suppose you take me there and we'll have a talk about old times, uh, huh? I'd, I'd like to talk tonight. I like to talk. Where are you living? Her Buckingham Apartments. It's uh, 6th Street, number 614. 614. 614. All yeah. right, that's fine. Well, let's go then. Yeah. Come on. You're not just trying to get me out of here. Of course not. Come on, pal. Come on. Okay. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing happened tonight, Casey. The funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where he lives, Annie. Hmm? If I can only get him into his apartment. What'd he do? Give you the number before he Yeah, two B, second floor. All right, here goes. Hey, you're uh, not going to carry him. It's the only way he can be moved. But this oh. is a walk-up place, Casey. The, the stairs. Oh, poor guy isn't heavy. Open the door for me, will you, Annie? Oh, well, all right, sure. Mm. I'd better come along and help you with the apartment door, too. Yeah, if you don't mind, honey. Gee, an awful cheap-looking place. Well, guys don't usually come out of prison heavy with dough. Well, I wonder who's... What's he living on? Dixie Trumbull, the songwriter, was always Artie's closest pal. Uh, imagine Dixie's putting him up for... He hasn't been on the chips lately either. There, here we are. Here's 2B. Uh, yeah. You have to go through his pockets and find the key. Yeah, yeah, I'll prop him up right uh, here. Eddie. Funniest thing happened, didn't I? Why are you snapping out of it, Casey? Uh, funniest thing. Uh-oh. Passed out again. Yeah. I wonder where he carries his yeah. key. Uh, Annie. Hmm? Look at this. <gasps> Automatic pistol. This was in his pocket. This chump's just out of jail on parole. He's toting a cat. Uh-oh. This doesn't look good, Casey. Looks lousy. <laughs> hey, Annie. Yeah? This gun was fired not long ago. Fire? Yeah, smell it. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Let's look at the clip. Yeah. One cartridge missing. What do you think? Your guess is as good as mine. The funniest thing happened tonight. Funniest Man, thing. Man, I found his key. Here, Annie, unlock the door, will you? Yeah, okay. I'm going to snap this guy out of his daze and ask him a few questions. All right, switch on the lights. Oh, yeah. Uh, here we are. How are you going to make him talk? There, there. Now. You find some coffee in that kitchenette, will you, Annie, while I hold this guy up? Yeah. Make a pot of triple strength while you're doing it. I'll be ducking this guy in a cold bath. Okay. All right now, Artie. You come into this bathroom. <clears throat> Get those clothes off you. Uh, funny thing happened tonight. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it won't seem so funny after you hit this cold water. <laughs> Hey, you are. 
Go out crazy. Don't push my head under. Can you breathe? All right, Artie. Okay, okay. I think you're on the sober side now. Come on, get out of the tub, put on your clothes. Come out. Yeah. Lady's making some hot coffee. A lady? Yeah, a friend of mine. Oh. I'll leave you alone now. Don't be long. And I want to have considerable talk with you. Talk? What about? Stay to your help. Get dressed and hurry. Is he okay, Casey? He knows what's going on around him now, anyway. Did he tell you anything? I haven't mentioned the gun. Let's have another look at that thing. Yeah. Foreign make. 29.5 caliber. It's got a pearl grip on it. It looks like a woman's gun. Yeah. See, it's funny. Phil Blaney was killed with a fancy little gat like this. You mean the man Maddox went to jail for yes. killing? Yes. The bullet they took out of his head was a 29.5. I remember because it's an unusual caliber for pistol ammunition. Oh? You see, in this country, we standardize pretty much on 22s, 25s, and 32s. Like the cartridge Logan handed me today, 38s and 45s. Yeah, you, Casey. What? Someone's trying the outside door. Yeah. Who's there? Open up, we're police. Police? Open up, Maddox, or we'll blast our way in. Hey, that's Sergeant Flanagan's voice. It's the last warning, Maddox. Hold Open everything, up. Flanagan, and I'll let you in. Casey, what are you doing here? Mind if I ask you the same question? We've come to arrest Maddox for murder, that's all. Murder? Who? Gypsy Hibbert. Gypsy Hibbert? Yeah. She was killed about two hours ago in her apartment. Now then, where's Maddox? Why do you think Maddox had anything to do with it? He was seen leaving the building she lives in. She was shot with the same kind of gap that killed Blaney five years ago. A 29-5 automatic. Hey, Casey, Let me do that... the talking, Annie. The only talk I want to hear right now is the answer to where's Maddox? He's here, Flanagan. Where? In the bathroom. There. Uh-huh. All right, bring him out, Sam. I'll cover you with my gun. Right, Sarge. Hey, Casey, he killed that woman with a gun. Maybe not, Em. Maybe not. Don't mention that gun. Not in the bathroom, Sarge. He's gone. What? Hey, that open window. He must have swung under the fire escape and got away. Casey, you're to blame for him getting away. I am. You stalled me here while he was going out that window. I wasn't stalling you. Well, we'll see what Captain Logan thinks about it. You know, you've got me in a jam, pal. Well, I'll make Logan see you weren't to blame. Where is he? At the late Gypsy Hibbert's apartment, trying to find out just what happened there. Well, let's go. I want to find out what happened at the late Gypsy Hibbert's apartment, too. <laughs> Mother's Day has become a fine American tradition, and many Americans make it a point to show their appreciation of mother's role as homemaker by sending her bright flowers and also practical gifts, useful items to lessen her work and increase her enjoyment. And that's why a complete set of Fire King oven glass is so appropriate. As an experienced homemaker, she'll tell you how much better food tastes when baked in Fire King oven glass, and how tempting is the appetizing clean look as the piping hot food is brought to the table. And as for cutting down her housework, well, Fire King Oven Glass cuts dishwashing time by a full two-thirds, for you bake, serve, and reheat food in the same casserole or baking dish. Fire King Oven Glass has a beautiful pale blue color which adds charm to any table. Every piece is guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Now you'll find complete sets at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store. The ideal gift for Mother's Day or any day. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. That's why we were in Artie Maddox's apartment, Logan. That's all we know about him. Uh, when you undressed him before you stuck him in a cold tub, Casey, he didn't run across a gun in his clothes. I, I wasn't looking for a gun. Casey. Now, suppose you give Ann and me the lowdown on this shooting, pal. Well, a guy called up headquarters. Uh, wouldn't give his name, but he told us to pick up Lou Carboni and ask him why he'd just killed his ex-wife. Ask Lou Carboni why he'd killed Gypsy Hibbert? Yeah. So two of my men went to Carboni's home. They found him playing poker with three guys who said he hadn't left the house all evening. Hmm. At the same time he was being checked, I came here to Gypsy Hibbard's apartment. Got the super to let me in, and 
Found her lying on the living room floor with a 29.5 slug in her head. And somebody told you they'd seen Artie Maddox leaving the building. Yeah, the superintendent. And checking the time he saw Maddox leave with the medical examiner's finding, the woman must have been shot just a few minutes before. Have you any idea who made that call to headquarters, Captain? Oh, I think Maddox made it. He killed Gypsy Hibbert because she married another guy, Lou Carboni, after Maddox took the rap for her in that Blaney shooting. Maddox hated Carboni, too, for getting the gal he wanted, so he tries to frame Carboni for the murder he's just committed himself. You know, Carboni wasn't on good terms with his ex-wife. He wasn't seen near this building tonight. Maddox was. A real murderer would take good care not to be seen. Oh, yeah. yeah? Sergeant Flanagan, Captain. Now, come in, Sergeant. Carboni wants to know if he can go now, sir. Carboni's here? Yeah, yeah, I was questioning him in the kitchen before you arrived. I'll talk to him, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain wants you, Mr. Carboni. Captain, it's so late. I uh, wonder... Carboni, you can go home now. But don't leave there without letting me know where I can reach you. Very well. Hello, Carboni. Oh. Hello, Casey. <laughs> Sergeant Flanagan tells me you helped the murderer of my ex-wife make his escape tonight. I don't believe Flanagan told you that. That I didn't, Casey. All uh, I said now, was... Now, you... don't take me seriously. I was only kidding. Doesn't seem like a good time for kidding. You're in a spot, Carboni. What do you mean by that? Can't you figure it? Why, you... Never mind. Go on home, Carboni. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Perhaps you'd better tell Casey about my alibi, Captain. He has told me. It's a very good one. Good night. Oh. Well, Andy and I will be running along too, Logan. It's our bad luck this case had to break too late for a morning paper. <laughs> that is tough, isn't it? And I expect to have Art Maddox under arrest long before your next edition, so the afternoon sheets will get first crack at that news, too. Where do you expect to find Maddox? Well, there's a general alarm out. We'll pick him up. Say, you used to know him pretty well. Maybe you have an idea where he died out. I didn't even know where he lived until after I ran into him at the Blue Note tonight. Come on, Annie. Hey, Casey. Let's go, kid. Good night, Logan. All right. Casey, you, you suppressed evidence. And you didn't tell Logan about that gun you found. You were swell, kid. You didn't tell him either. Here's the outside door. But we've got to tell him. Otherwise, we're accessories We won't to... bother with the elevator, Annie. Let's walk down. We're not leaving until you give that gun to Logan. Well, yes, we are. Come on. No. Give him the gun later. After I have a talk with Maddox. Talk with... You know where he find it? I think so. Which makes another little item I've suppressed. Why? Well, let's call it a hunch, Annie. I have a feeling that if the cops find Artie before I do, if they have that gun that seems to clinch his guilt, he hasn't got a chance. And he didn't shoot Gypsy Hibbert any more than he killed Phil Blaney. You think Carboni did it? All I'm thinking of now is locating Maddox. Well, where are you going to look for him? Well, he needs a friend tonight, a dependable friend. His closest pal is that songwriter, Dixie Trumbull. All right, we're heading for Dixie's place. <laughs> Set eyes on Artie for two, three days, Casey. On the level, he ain't here. Oh, listen, Dixie. Miss Williams and I want to help the guy. He needs help. Don't give me a wrong steer. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. And I got no idea where Artie is. It's okay, Dixie. Hello, Artie. Why, you said not to let anyone know you were here. Casey's my friend. Yes. This should convince you of that, fellow. Oh, the gun. I figured you'd found it on me. And Casey didn't tell the police about it. Well... Take the shells out of it. Put it here on this table until you tell me what to do with it. What does the gat mean, Artie? And what's the stuff about cops? I haven't told you, Dixie, because the less you know, the less trouble you'll have. I'll go out and take a walk for half an hour. Please, Dixie. Okay, pal. Guess you've got a good reason for asking. I have. That's all I need to know. See you later. I can't have him mixed up in this case. He's too grand a guy. This apartment of his was the only place I knew of to go after I ducked out that bathroom window. I spent five years in prison. I can't go back there. When I heard the cops say he was looking for me, I lost my head. What were you doing at Gypsy Hibbers tonight? You don't think I killed her? I'd have given the cops that gun if I had. And told them to look for you here. Come on, let's have the lowdown. Okay. You know, I was crazy about Gypsy before... Yes, yes, I know. Before, 
Yeah. Well, after I came out of jail, she wouldn't see me or even talk to me over the phone. Last night, I made up my mind I'd see her. I had to. Then... <laughs> it was funny. It's the funny part we want to hear about. Well, I, I, I sneaked up to her apartment. A guy in stairs showed me how to pick locks, and I, I sat in the dark waiting for her to come home. Finally, the outside door was opened with a key. It was Lou Carboni. Carboni? Yes, he sat down in the next room and waited in the dark. Then the door opened again. It was Gypsy this time. <laughs> he told her why he'd come to kill her. Then I watched him do it. You watched Why did him... Carboni kill her? <laughs> it was funny, Casey. It was, it was so funny I couldn't raise a hand to stop him. Come on, hold on to yourself, buddy. What did he say well, to her? She had been blackmailing him, you know, threatening to tell the cops it was really Carboni who killed Blaney. Carboni killed Blaney. And I had, I had taken the rap because Gypsy told, told me she had killed Blaney. She was protecting Carboni then at my expense. Then she married Carboni and they got to hate each other. And tonight, he killed her while I was there to, to watch. <laughs> it wasn't a funny case. It wasn't, it wasn't funny. <laughs> Come on, Artie, cut it out. What happened after Carboni shot her? Come on, Artie, pull out of it, pull out of it. He, he, he wiped his fingerprints off the gun. He put it in her hand to look as though she'd committed suicide. But he didn't know I was watching. Then he let himself out the back way. I realize now it was a crazy thing to do, but I, I picked up the gun. I put it in my pocket. I thought he'd spoil his suicide setup. Then I got out of the place. I phoned the cops to pick him up. Artie, no jury's going to believe the story you just told us. I know that. But Carboni's not going to be free and alive while I pay for another murder he's committed. What do you mean? I got another gun before I came to Dixie's. You see? I'm going to kill Lou Carboni. Artie, give me that gun. Keep back, Casey. I'm going to kill Carboni today before the cops can find me. Don't be a fool. You've just said no jury will believe my story. Give me that gun. Keep back. You... You won't shoot me. Not to kill you. But I'll let you have it. He will shoot, Casey. Look out. Okay, Annie. Now, you two get into this clothes closet. I'm sorry, but this is the way it's got to be. It's a foolish way, Artie. It's the only way. <coughs> no! Let, let me go! Oh, Casey! Give me back a gun! Not a chance! I never figured you for a killer, Artie. You're not going to louse me up by shooting Carboni or anybody else. Thanks, Casey. Hey! Drop the gun you just took from him, Casey. <sighs> Drop it! Carboni. Yes, there's nothing else I can do, Carboni. Thanks. Now all of you move back against that wall. You see, Maddox? Like Casey, I figured you'd hide out with Dixie Trumbull. Why did you come here? That gun I planted beside my late wife's body wasn't found there. And I leave nothing to chance. When your bodies are found, Casey, it'll be thought that Maddox killed you and this lady before committing suicide. Mm, same old gag. The gun to be found in Artie's hand. Same as you met that one on the table to be found in gypsies. It's always a good gag before a jury. And I'll use the gun on that table, the one that killed my former wife. Then there'll be no doubt that you did all the shooting, Maddox. Are you? You keep quiet, Artie. He'd better. <laughs> Sweet little gun, this 29.5 automatic. <laughs> Always like these imported gats. Well, you take the first slug from it, Casey. But what's wrong? That 29.5 isn't loaded, Carboni. The shells are in my pocket. Give them to me. You can't hold your other gun and load the automatic, too. You can load it. With its barrel pointed at Miss Williams. If you make a single phony move. All right. I know when I'm licked. Take the gun. Put a shell in its chamber first. Okay. Now load the clip. This suits you. Hold the gun by the barrel and slide the clip in. Now what? Put the gun on the table. Don't get your finger near the trigger. There. <laughs> nice little guns. Those 29 vibes. Get ready to take it, Casey. Okay. I got you and the lady into this, Casey. You'll get the second slug, Maddox. Then Miss Williams. Now, uh, Casey. So long. <laughs> With that shell, Carboni, so long to you. Did the gun blow up? Yes, it exploded right in his face. 
right in his face. Wasn't it funny? Huh. Wasn't it funny? <laughs> We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. Last week, we told you about a sensational announcement from Anchor Hawking, which was to be made on the air tonight. However, we're obliged to postpone this exciting announcement until next Thursday, so be sure to tune in Crime Photographer one week from tonight. Now, meanwhile, surveys show that a vast majority of women prefer to buy foods packed in crystal clear glass. They give dozens of different reasons, but practically all say they prefer glass because it lets them see exactly what they buy before they buy it. Of the hundreds of young mothers questioned about baby food containers, eight out of nine say they not only prefer, but insist on prepared baby foods packed in glass. And their most important reasons are that glass is cleaner and more sanitary, and that leftovers can be resealed and safely stored in the original container. Now, you too can enjoy these advantages in buying foods. Simply demand foods packed in glass in anchor glass containers sealed by tamper-proof anchor vacuum caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. explanation, of course, is very simple, Ethelbert. You see, I, I forced the 32 caliber cartridge Logan gave me yesterday into the chamber of that 29 5 caliber automatic. And it wouldn't pass through a barrel that was too small by two and a half hundredths of an inch. You remember, uh, remember, Ethelbert, that inventor's machine gun that blew up because the shells were too large? Yeah. yeah. The explosion didn't kill Carboni, huh? No. He'll live to go to the chair. And as for Artie Maddox, well, the criminal record he never deserved is being wiped off the books. So he'll just live again. It's funny, wasn't it? Yeah. Funny. Very funny. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Crime Photographer is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. The part of Maddox was played by Lawson Zerby, and Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. If you're under 35 and are a high school graduate, you may be able to qualify for a nursing career. As the need for nurses is urgent, check with your local hospital on how to apply for training. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 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 